That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. In today's segment, I want to, I'm gonna keep illustrating this to you because the truth is all around us. And because of our rebelliousness, we refuse to acknowledge it. And what's even worse is not acknowledging the truth makes our lives worse. But once again, we are so dug in, so prideful, so vain, that we would rather have a corrupt, evil, broken, monstrous, brutal world than simply acknowledging the truth and having a better world, having, having a unified world, having a good life. And so in this segment, what I'm gonna do is this is something that I've done before of you, if you follow me. I'm simply going to type in shootings in Chicago last weekend and see what happens. Okay? All right, let's do this. Okay, let's see. Let's see what pops up. See, Chicago breaking news. Wait, here we go. Last weekend, at least 60 people were shot, including 10 fatally in shootings across Chicago, according to the police department. The shootings occurred during a three-day holiday weekend with five people shot, two fatally on the city's south side. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability has not determined whether the man discharged his firearm at two officers before being fatally shot by police. The shootings occurred in suburban Chicago, Washington State, Pennsylvania, St. Louis. Okay, so this is this is more than just Chicago. But you see here, 60 people were shot at, including 10 fatally in shootings across Chicago. So then it goes into more stuff. All right, let's see if we can dive in deeper. And I find it interesting that it, it's a three-day holiday weekend when the holiday, I believe, is that made-up Juneteenth holiday. Right, like a completely made-up holiday. And if it's not a made-up holiday, it... it once again, is not dwell within truth. I don't know why we want to hold on to these fallacies. They don't, they don't make us better. That's what I find fascinating, right? Like you want to live a secular life and that secular life is not a better way than, than living by the word of God. It's, it's not better. I have decades upon decades of historical precedent to cite if you want to have a debate. <laughs> I mean, we can, just, we can just go with the 20th century alone. It's not a better life. And we refuse that pride, that vanity, right? We want to be God. We're God. Or there isn't God, which is basically just saying that the seat is empty, so you want to sit in it. <laughs> so let's, let's see here. Let's see if I can find uh, more details. Okay, so check this out. Chicago shootings. This is even uh, more. 75 shot, 14 fatally in weekend gun violence across city, police say. Now understand that, that the use of gun violence is, is, a, is a propagandist term. This is violence perpetrated with the gun. Using gun violence is the same. That's, that's what the anti-gun agenda, you know, when they say, you know, weapons of war, like these are all, these are all their little catchphrases to try to reshape your mind as if violence only happens, violence should only be, should only, it should only be alarming if a gun is involved. And that's because there's a contingent of, of, of people in our country and even around the world who wants America to be disarmed, but our second amendment is holding strong. But this shows me, this shows you a couple of things. One, that, that leadership, generally speaking, especially the Biden administration, they don't care about the violence. This is just an opportunity for them to try to get you to disarm yourselves as if that will stop this. There's nothing to show that that's gonna stop it. There is more self-defense uses with fi fi uses with uh, firearms annually than, than shootings. Most of the shootings are suicides. The other bulk of them come from inner city violence such as this, which you, you have to look at the culture. It has nothing to do with the firearm, it's just a tool. 
we, we know this, right? We, we know this because if, you, if we look at it logically and we look at it historically and we just look at the way things are being reported, right? When somebody runs over, <clears throat> excuse me, when somebody uses a car to kill somebody, we don't say vehicular violence and we don't blame the car or the car's manufacturer. We blame the person behind the wheel because the car is a tool. But when somebody shoots someone, all of a sudden, it's the gun's fault, that inanimate object, and it's the manufacturer's fault. You see the inconsistency? That's because it's not rooted in truth. So we have 75 shot, 14 fatally, and weakened gun violence across the city, police say. All right, and then of course, we have people come out and, oh my God, this, 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 this. And what they, what they say could be sincere, but if Chicago, there are people in Chicago, right? And people have individual sovereignty. They have their individual minds. This is their place. Why are they not protecting it? Why are they not stopping this crime? Why do they keep relying on a government that does not care? Because this has been going on for a very long time. If the government really cared, the local government really cared, you wouldn't have this increase. You wouldn't have this consistency of violence. Right? Because one of two things, having this, having this level of violence go on for so long means that the leadership is either inept or they're allowing it on purpose. Either way, they should not be in their position. If they're inept, they need to go. And if they're allowing it, they're completely and utterly evil and they need to be put in jail, <laughs> right? Now, I'll put this link so you can, you can read it. It's, it's usually when I read these things, like here, a 17-year-old girl was rushed to the hospital in critical condition with a gunshot wound to the right eye, 17. Right, you just read through this. The 52-year-old victim was shot in the back by one of the attackers when he tried to run away. Look at this, it's indiscriminate violence. It is absolutely horrible. But when there's, but when there's <clears throat> excuse me, but when there's a mass shooting that, that they deem advantageous for their cause, they will, it will be national news. Do you see, their inconsistency shows that their heart is not genuine. Because I believe that 75 shot, even though it may not technically be a mass shooting, that's mass shooting in a weekend. And this isn't even the most that Chicago has had in a weekend. They've been in the triple digits in a holiday weekend before, within recent history, within the last three years. So what I wanna, my whole point to this is Leadership isn't even looking for an actual solution because they're not acknowledging the truth. They have their own agenda. And their agenda is not your safety. It's not your prosperity. It's not your education. It simply isn't. It simply isn't. They're serving themselves. They're not representing us. They're representing themselves. And it's a small contingent of people with the resources to manipulate and pervert our government. These are people that are in the top 1%. And then other folks go along with it or, or they fall prey to the propaganda and the brainwashing. But what I find fascinating is in spite of all that, you're actually living in the reality that they've created for you and you're still not waking up. Chicago is living in the reality of where the leadership has led them and where it's going to continue to lead them because they're not changing course. Same thing in California where I live. The leadership here, like Newsom is a snake, but he didn't just change California into California over the last few years. It's been going this trajectory for a while. So it's leadership on the whole at multiple levels. They're not representing us because the state with which you live in is not prosperous in spite of what they say. Things are worse. And what do they ask for? More power. They just had more power if they just had more power. So when are you guys going to wake up and just acknowledge reality. This isn't about Democrat and, and, and Republican and Libertarian. It's not about liberal. It's not about conservative. It's not about any of those things. It's about reality. It's about truth. And we want to be prosperous. We want our families to be safe. We want our children to be protected and well-educated so they can have prosperous lives. That's what everybody wants. They want to be able to have the opportunity to build their life However they, want to, however they see fit, however they want to build their life, as long as it doesn't infringe on, on somebody else's build. Very, very simple, very simple concept. 
but that puts the power in the hands of the people and out of theirs. I don't know why. There's so much evidence. People get into politics and they get rich. How is representing the people allow them to become richer than the people that they're representing? The whole concept of lobbying is absolutely ridiculous to me. Because that concept alone is big bank, take little bank. So people with more money are going to be able to push our government in the direction that best suits them. And yet here we are. And you understand this is all transpiring because we are broken. That's why. Because the first father ruined it for all of us. We're all in his lineage. <laughs> and he ruined it for all of us. Right? He simply did. It said in the very, very beginning, you just go to Genesis, right? You just go to Genesis here. And, and I'm reading from, from Genesis 3.15. No, no, no. Genesis 3.16. And this is what God said to the woman. Now, this is, this is in Eden after, after the serpent did what he did and, and Eve, you know, she took the fruit and then told her, told her man like, hey, this is good. Go and get this bite. In spite of the fact that God said no. <laughs> that was an, an overt act of rebellion. So this, is, this, this will explain 75 shot, 14 family, the world that we live in. This is very, very simple. Very, very beginning of the Bible. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. So for what you've done, these are the consequences that you brought upon yourself through your own choices. It was a willful act of rebellion, but it was your choice because God is not, he's not a slave master. He's not a dictator. He gave them the rules. They decided not to listen to them and do their own thing. And so for that, the consequences that her own actions, her own choices brought upon her was what I just read. And what I find interesting here is your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. It means you will, you will battle for leadership within your household, but he is the leader, but your battle for it because you, just, you chose to live in contradiction to the word. And then to Adam, who he put the responsibility on, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth you, and you shall eat the plant of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it, you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Look at that. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and not the word of God. You chose. She was your responsibility. You were supposed to ensure that she didn't eat. Not only did you fail in that regard, but then you also took of it and then tried to blame her. As is, as if you as if you weren't the head, as if you, as, as as if she didn't come from your body, you are to lead. You don't lead from behind. He was a coward. He did it because he wanted to, and then tried to blame her. Nah, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. And because of that, because of that, we have this broken world, and we have this world where seventy five can get shot, fourteen fatally in three days, and it's just local news. I want you to just wake up. Maybe you don't believe in the word, but you see the reality with which you are in. I'm just asking you to wake up to what you see outside your door, not what you're getting told. Look at what's happening to your life and be honest about it. Be honest about your choices and how it's contributed to where you are. Be honest about everything, about what you do well and what you don't do well, because only the truth will set you free. Only the truth will. But as long as you live in open rebellion, as long as you don't want to acknowledge this truth, you will be a slave to this broken world and you will have nothing but tragedy. 
Anyway, I just wanted to uh, pass that along. And as I said, I will leave the link to this. This is uh, ABC7 Chicago. Like I said, it's local news. I don't know how 75 people shot and 14 fatally in a weekend is local news. I don't know why that's not national news, but hey, you know, I guess uh, journalism isn't what it, what it used to be. <laughs> you guys be well.